This lesson is on GCF and difference of two squares. GCF stands for greatest common factor, and then we'll deal with difference of two squares when we get to it. So in this lesson, oh, hold on a second. In this lesson, we have that we are going to be factoring. Factoring is the opposite of multiplying. So if you're multiplying polynomials together, then you would get a series of terms. Well, factoring is undoing that. Kind of like when you have multiplication, to undo multiplication, we would divide. So what we're doing with factoring here is you want to think, what's the largest thing that I can divide out of both 5x and 20, so out of each term? And the largest thing that I can divide out is my GCF. In this case, it's going to be 5. So we want to take that 5 out of 5x minus 20. So you have to say, what's 5x divided by 5? Just x. Or another way to say this is 5 times what gives me 5x? Well, 5 times x gives me 5x. Then you could say the same thing. 5 times what gives me negative 20? 5 times negative 4. Because if we distributed this back out, we would get 5x minus 20. And this would be our final answer. If you look at this one, we're trying to find our GCF here. And if you look, each of them, I mean, there's an invisible one here and a 4. So we're not going to be dividing a number out. But if you'll notice, they both have x's. See, so the highest amount of x's that you can take out is actually the smallest exponent, which in this case would be x squared. So that's going to be my GCF that I pull out. So you want to say x squared times what gives me x cubed? x squared times x. x squared times what gives me 4x squared? x squared times 4. And so now we've pulled that GCF out. If you look at this one here, we want to say, OK, well, I think there's something we can divide out of both of these numbers. So what's the largest number we can divide out of both 12 and 8 evenly? And that is actually going to be a 4. In addition, look, both of these terms have what letter? x. So we can take out an x out of both terms as well. So my GCF is 4x. So 4 times what gives me 12? 3. Notice I already have an x represented, so I don't need it. What is this term still missing? A y. So 4x times 3y will give me 12xy. Then we go ahead and bring our subtraction sign in. Now we do it again. 4 times what gives me 8? 4 times 2. Notice again, they both have an x, so we have the x represented. So let's double check. Does 4x times negative 2 give me negative 8x? Yes. And so then that would be our final answer. In this final example here with GCF, we want to look what's the largest number we can divide out. Well, 2 is the largest number that can go into both 4 and 10 evenly. Now let's look at the x. They both have an x, so we're looking for the smallest exponent, which would be 3. And then look, they both have a y, so we're going to go ahead and put a y. And again, the smallest exponent they both have is a 2. So that's going to be my GCF. So my final answer here is going to be 2x cubed y squared times, now let's go ahead and do this, 2 times what gives me 4? 2. And then I already have an x cubed represented. I already have a y squared represented, so I'm done. Because if I multiply this times 2, I would get 4x cubed y squared. So now we're going to go ahead and bring the addition sign. And now we do it again. 2 times what gives me 10? 5 x cubed times what gives me x to the fifth? That would be x squared. y squared times what gives me y cubed? Just a y. And so now you can double check if you distribute it to both pieces, it would come back to this form here. So that is just GCF right there. Then we also have this thing called a difference of two squares. The idea behind the difference of two squares is it's got to be a difference, which means subtraction. And then that means that both of these have to be perfect squares. In other words, something times itself gives me that term. Something times itself gives me that term. So when you factor this, you're going to open up two parentheses here. And you have to think, essentially, what is that thing times itself that gives me x squared? x times x gives me x squared. And then what number times itself gives me 49? 7 times 7. Now in order to get that middle term to go away, because usually we have it as x squared plus some kind of number x, 
and then a minus or plus another number. In order to get that middle term to go away, remember we have to have opposite signs. Because if we foiled this back out, it would bring us right back here. So we take essentially the square root of the first term, that's x, square root of the second term, that's 7, and then 1 is addition, 1 is subtraction. Let's we'll see another example. So in this one, do we see something that we can take the square root of perfectly for both of them? Yes. Is there a subtraction sign in the middle? Yes. So we're going to go ahead and open two parentheses. So what times itself gives me 9x squared? 3x times 3x. What times itself gives me 16y squared? 4y, 4y. And remember to get rid of that middle term so that all I have left is two terms. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. Sometimes you're given one where you have to take out a GCF. What can we divide out of both of these? We can divide a 2 out of both of them. So 2 times what gives me 50x squared? 2 times 25x squared. Minus 2 times what gives me 32? 2 times 16. Now if I cover that up, look, we've got a difference of 2 squares. So what do we do? We bring the 2 down. We open up two parentheses. So what times itself gives me 25x squared? 5x. What times itself gives me 16? 4. And remember, to get rid of that middle term, one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative. This one right here is like the tricky question that we have. Because we look and we say, can we take the square root? Or is there something times itself that can give me both terms? Yes and there's a subtraction sign. So we're going to open up the parentheses. x squared times itself gives me the x to the fourth. 1 times 1 gives me the 1. 1 is plus, 1 is minus. Now this is as far as we can go. There's no GCF, so we can bring that one down, x squared plus 1. The catch is that if you look at this, this is still a difference of two squares. So we got to factor this one even farther. So we open our parentheses. What times itself gives me x squared? x times x. What times itself gives me 1? 1 and 1. One's got to be positive, one's got to be negative, and now we are done because we can't go any farther.